As they left the castle, Landon quickly checked on the system. System, how do I use you to map out the territory? Answering host. Host just needs to look at the map of the empire, stored in the system and highlight the territories that belong to host. Just like that? Landon asked almost not believing the system. Yes. So what happens when I want to expand my territories? If that were to happen host just needs to highlight more regions on the SIDM map. Landon nodded as he listened to the system. This is also very useful as the system will inform host if any there any enemy attacks or unwanted guests in the host's territories. That's good then. Landon looked at the map and decided to draw a circle around Baymard. He made sure to add at least 20 meter difference between the city walls and the surroundings. Once he was done, a pop-up screen appeared. Would you like to view your selected territory on the monitor? He was excited. With a monitor could check every area in Baymard without being there in person. This is extremely useful for times when he might have to leave the territory for urgent matters. He clicked on yes and viewed the city. Looking at the monitor, it resembled a regular flat screen TV. He could see people fishing on the sea coast, people farming inside the city, people going out to hunt, the city walls, the castle, and so on. He was satisfied with this mapping function in the system. Baymard was divided into three regions, the upper regions, the central regions and the lower regions. As he passed through the upper region of the city, he saw various estates. There were sixteen estates that each had at least six stones mansions and ten small buildings on them. These mansions were extremely huge, having their own courtyards and servant quarters. Each estate was surrounded by a four-foot fence. A person standing next to the fence could see the entire estate without stressing themselves. If it were back on earth, each of these mansions could be used to open a major university. They were big, but not as big as his castle. At least there are no nobles in the city to bother me. The city lord used to stay in Landon's castle, while these other estate belonged to the barons and dukes. Once they heard that Baymard will no longer be under the protection of Arcadina, they all fled to the capital. They didn't want to serve Landon so they left. What a joke, serving a fifteen-year-old prince who has no power. In their eyes he was trash, a prince with only three hundred and thirty soldiers? They were always stronger than him physically and had a larger number of knights under their wings. In his world strength is everything. They knew that Landon had been exiled along with his family to Baymard. Staying would only bring the wrath of the king onto them. Choosing to serve Landon would be stabbing the king in his back. Besides, they didn't want to lend any of their knights to aid in protecting Baymard. If a war broke out between Baymard and any neighboring cities, there would be no reinforcements coming in to help them. Coupled with the lack of food in the territory, it was not a risk they were willing to take. They knew that the king was indirectly saying I want Prince Landon out of Arcadina, and if anyone helps him, they would face the consequences. Once Landon and his men left the upper region, they arrived at the central part of Baymard. This region was where the villagers lived. As the group moved through the city, they greeted the villagers and aided any who needed any form of assistance. Landon kept observing his surroundings. Compared to the houses in the capital, these ones could easily be destroyed in harsh weather conditions. From his memories, the houses in the capital were all made from stone and wood, making them sturdy and long-lasting. But the houses in Baymard were made of sticks, straw and mud. They all had frameworks made of timber. Their walls are made of a dried mixture of woven twigs and mud. And their roofs made of straw. These houses were typically called mudbrick houses. No wonder it was reported that Baymard had the highest death rate in Arcadina. He thought, Looking at the roads here, they were not as good as the ones in the upper region. There were patches of mud on the ground and a lot of potholes on the roads. On their way to the lower regions, they saw a group of men carrying bows and arrows hoping to get some meat for their families, women carrying water and children running around and playing. Once they reached the lower levels, it was all vigation and farmlands. Landon could see over a 300 fields, but only about five people on them. It was clear to see that even the people believed that their lands were barren. Looking west from the fields, Landon was surprised to see two giant estates. He then turned to the east from the fields and only one gigantic estate there. Landon's interest was piqued. He turned to the Lucius and the group. Why would nobles leave the upper region to build their estates here, don't you find it very strange? Indeed my king, Lucius said and everyone else nodded. My king, maybe they found something valuable in this lower region and decided to stay here, said a shy knight. The knight had blonde hair and dark brown eyes. If he were on earth he would look like a K-pop artist. 
He had no muscles and looked incredibly weak, like a twig. Landon was not worried because once he started training them, they gain a lot of muscles. The knight's voice showed a hint of shyness and fear. It was clear that he lacked any confidence in himself. What's your name, age, rank and captain? Landon asked. Billy Vane, age 17, squire under Captain Mark. My king. Billy, that was an excellent suggestion. They might be things there that could help us better the kingdom. Excellent. Landon said while smiling. Inwardly Landon was shocked that Billy was 17 years old. He really looked like a 14-year-old boy. Billy was extremely excited to be complimented by the king. One had to know that when he spoke he was shaking like a leaf. Seeing his highness in high spirits, he felt more confident in himself. The other knights also nodded and thought that what Billy said made sense. After all, even the villagers didn't stay here. So why would nobles? It all seemed very sketchy and questionable. Let's go west first. I'm curious to know why they needed two estates there, compared to the east. The first estate they stepped into was located on a hill. As they stepped in, Landon was stunned by what he saw. It looked a pack of ferocious lions clawed their way out of the estate. The courtyard had several pieces of broken equipment on the floor. The left boot of a shoe was found floating in a pond at the center of the countyard. A trail of grain could be seen from the courtyard trailing into the estate. Looking at the floor more closely, he spotted a woman's undergarment by the trail of grain, a ripped painting in the flower beds and what looked like roasted fish. Were they so scared of my father's wrath that much that they had to throw away their meal? He thought. Landon and his men were all stupidly confused. Just what is going on? Nothing here adds up. They thought. In one of the courtyards, they saw large quantities of ash scattered all over the floor and traces of twigs and swords with blood stains on them could also be seen. They searched through every mansion on the estate and couldn't find anything valuable. Just as they were about to leave, Landon saw a cave at the back of the estate. Once they reached the entrance of the cave, the men put their hands on their sheath in preparation for any sudden danger. The entrance of the cave looked like it came straight out of a Lord of the Rings movie. Landon was just waiting for Samuel in the White to pop up from thin air. The cave had molybdenum, trona and feldspar stones on the walls and ceilings. The people in this continent only knew the uses of molybdenite. Molybdenite was used to increase the corrosion resistance on swords, armor and any silvery objects. This was the era of swords. Thousands of swords were forged daily in this world. This was for sure a rare treasure. On the other hand, people used trona and feldspar as decorative stones in the continent. In their eyes, the these two were just regular stones. Completely worthless. But to Landon who came from Earth, they were priceless. Trona could be used in glass making, paper, detergents, textiles, the list is so long. This was truly a huge win for them. The cave was so big that Landon thought they would easily get lost if they kept going forward. So they decided to leave. The second estate stood on another hill, 700 meters away from the first. Walking in, the estate was far cleaner than the first. It was truly stunning. Landon was in awe. They found bags of planting seeds and wheat in the kitchens, a ton of armor, swords and also a courtyard scattered with ash and blood stains. Moving towards the back of the estate, they found another cave entrance. Once they stepped into the cave, they saw a lot of iron ores. This was an iron ore mine. To think they had such things here. Everyone become excited again and kept wondering why no one in the empire knew of this mine. They looked around for a while before deciding to head to the other estate on the other side of the farms. The estate was a lot smaller compared to the other two out west. Searching the mansions, they still found a lot of seeds, armor and swords. Like the other two estates, they found a courtyard with a large quantity of ash on the floor and a cave at the back of the estate. This cave had a lot of mineral pigments and ion oxides on the walls and ceilings. Looking at the walls, Landon could see red ochre, yellow ochre, unbeer, saltpeter and limestones. In this world, people used these ores to make various pigments for paint. Only royalty, potential women for selected for harems and wealthy people could have their portraits painted. Some peasants could live out their entire lives and never have their portraits taken. Everything about painting was expensive. If people in the empire knew that Landon had this, they would cough out blood heavily and wage a full-scale war against him. As the men all thought of the benefits of having paint, Landon had his own thoughts. System, are the other mineral ores important? Answering host. Saltpeter is the main ingredient for making gunpowder. 
It can also be used in making fireworks, rockets, food preservatives and can also be used as plant fertilizer. For the other ores, they can be used as pigments for cosmetics and future inventions. Limestone can be used as soil conditioner, aggregates in concrete animal fillers, and so on. Host the possibilities are endless. Landon became excited after listening to the system. He looked at the cave and thought, Oh my god, there's actually large quantities of saltpeter on the walls and ceilings. Looking at the white crystalline cones on the ceiling and the walls, he felt like Scrooge Maduck. He even started smiling stupidly. In truth, saltpeter ores looked like frozen snow cones on the ceilings in winter. He was reminded of the Disney movie Frozen when he saw this. There was no way he would let it go. This people on the continent didn't know what the uses of these ores were. But thanks to the system and his previous life, he now knew the importance of these ores. Although he was happy now, he knew he had a long way to go. Especially when looking at the ores. He needed to find ways to extract the elements from the rocks. On Earth, these ores would have been processed using very acidic compounds. There were no distillation columns, pipes or tanks here. This was very stressful to him. Even thinking about it, he couldn't help but knit his brows. Take cosmetics for example. Although he had the pigments for it, he needed to produce castor oil, glycerin, hydrolyzed corn starch, water, sodium chloride, oleal alcohol and so on. He needed at least 12 different ingredients here. He truly felt cheated. For every major invention, he just had one ingredient here. But he needed to be grateful for what he had at least. He started thinking of how he could use the ores. Ah, that's right, I saw a lot of slate stones around the territory. Now that I have enough raw materials, I can make a chalkboard. Ha ha ha. He thought as they walked in deeper. When they exited the cave, Landon faced his men and asked, What do you all think about this situation? The reports don't say anything about these three mines that we found. From the looks at it, the barons and the city lord might have been the only ones who knew about it, Gary answered. That may not be entirely true, since they needed workers for the mines. Do suppose they used the villagers? Josh asked. No. No. They would be digging their graves if they did that. Remember. They went through a lot means to painstakingly hide the resources from the empire so that they could fill their pockets. Lucius said. Right. If they told anyone else, they would be dead men walking. As it stands right now, they won't be able to tell the king about the resources in Baymard any longer, said Mark. Why? asked a young knight. They've been here for many years, and in that time frame they never reported any resources they found in Baymard. Lying to the king is the same as taking the king for a fool. The penalty is death. Mark answered. All the other knights gasped. Also, if King Barn knew that he had bestowed a land of fortune to our King Landon, he would kill them for sure. Josh added. I'm guessing if he really knew, he wouldn't have given the land to King Landon. Said another knight. Everyone nodded. They probably brought in their own workers, in fear that their secret would be found out. If the villagers knew of it, they would probably fight for some resources so they could sell and feed their families. Said Trey. That may be the case. After all, since we've been in the lower region, we haven't seen any people walking around. Since the people believe the land is barren, they don't come here anymore. And even if they did come, the mines are a great walking distance from their farmlands. Said Lucius. Also don't forget that the entrance and exit from Batmert is located in the central region, so no one really needs to be here. Gary added. Everyone agreed as well. My guess is that they burnt all the workers when realized how serious their situation was. Landon said. That would explain all the blood stains and ash we found in all three estates. After all, there's no guarantee that the workers would keep their secret forever. The only way to bury the secret was silencing the workers permanently. Trey added. They had to admit, the city lord and the barons put a lot of thought into their plans. They didn't think there would be a day when they would have to leave Baymart for good. They truly didn't see it coming. Since we are done, let's move to the sea coast. Landon said. The central region of Baymard was like the midpoint of a compass. Moving eastwards from the central region, one would reach the upper regions of Baymard. And in the west, you would reach the lower region. Likewise, to the north of the central regions was the entrance slash exit to Baymard. And in the south, the sea coastline entrance. Once they arrived the coastline, Landon and his men saw a lot of villagers fishing, while some were carrying baskets of fish on their heads. 
They spoke to the villagers, aided them and left to inspect the city walls and the forests by the entrance of Baymard. Once we're outside Baymard, Landon looked at the walls carefully. He had to admit, the walls were pretty formidable. The walls were in perfect conditions. Moving into the surrounding forests, they heard a shrill shout and the sound of a sword hitting angst something. Eh. Ting. Ting. There was a little boy who looked not older than eight, trying to kill a giant wild boar. The boy had light bright eyes and deep red hair. Just as the wild boar was about to strike him down, the boy shut his eyes tightly, as if accepting death. He waited and was surprised. He didn't feel any pain. Opening his eyes, he was stunned to see a group of knights and a dead wild boar on the ground. Thank you, Sirzi, the boy said. What's your name? Landon asked smilingly. Once the boy saw Landon's genuine smile, he knew they were friendly. My name is Momolai. Sir, who are you? Momo asked curiously. In the new king and lord of Baymard, Landon. The boy was shocked and frightened. My king, sorry for not greeting you earlier. It's all right, besides I'm more worried about you. Mosley was shocked. His highness is worried about me? He thought. Mano, why were you here alone? Don't you know how dangerous it is? Landon asked. I live alone with my elder sister, my king. Our parents died when I was just four summers old. Sister told me they died because of the cold. Sister recently got very sick. I know that for her to get better she needs a lot of meat, so I came to hunt. Landon and the men were sad on hearing this. Although they were some of the men were bullied in the capital, none of them had ever starved or seen someone die of cold. They vowed that they would work hard in order to protect the people. In fact Landon took pity on them too. In his previous life he orphaned, so seeing Momo struggle, he felt he should assist him. From now on, your sister will be my adopted sister, you will be my adopted brother and I will call you little Momo. You and my new sister will move into the castle immediately. From now on, that will be your new home. Landon said. Momo couldn't believe it. This was the king. Although Momo was eight years old, he knew when people were kind or tried to help him. He could tell that Landon was a good person. Landon introduced Momo to Lucius and the other knights. Everyone started teasing Momo, making him blush. Little Momo, let's go take my sister my new sister home. They carried the boar and left the forest. Landon, Momo and the men stood outside a tiny house. They could hear tiny cough sounds coming from inside. Landon went in with Momo, Josh and Lucius. Sister, sister, I brought food for you. Momo yelled as he ran into the house. Landon and group waited in the living room area. When Momo stepped into the bedroom room, he saw a frail but extremely beautiful girl laying on a straw bed. She had fiery red hair, light brown eyes and a petite frame. Sister, the king is here to see you. Grace nearly fell out of the bed when she heard Momo. Momo, did you get into any trouble? Why would the king want to see me? Grace asked questionably. Momo then narrated the entire story to Grace. Then let me thank his highness then, she said as she tried to stand up. Sister, he said that when you're ready he would come in. She nodded and Momo went out. A few seconds later, Momo, Landon, Lucius and Josh walked. Your Highness, she said as bowed her head. Looking at the tiny girl in front of him, Landon was sure she was nineteen years old. In truth she looked like a mini version of Urza Scarlet Titania from Fairy Tale. Please be at ease, you're my big sister after all. He said gently with a smile on his face. Grace was taken aback by his words, and after a while she relaxed. She found that what Momo said was true. He was ready a kind fellow. He was somewhat cute with his big white eyes. He looked like a cute bunny rabbit, she thought. My name is Landon, this is Commander Lucius and this is Captain Josh. May I know your name elder sister? As Josh looked at the girl in front of him he almost forgot to breath. Although she looked sick she was incredibly gorgeous. Her red hair and petite frame made her look like a fairy. The more he looked at her, the more he blushed. The same thing could be said for Grace, she had a hard time taking her eyes of Josh. She had never felt this way before. She blushed so hard that her already light red face turned deep red. Of course Lucius and Landon noticed all these and couldn't help chuckling inwardly. My name is Grace Lai. Grace, since I already take you as part of my family. I cannot bear to let you stay here with Momo on your own. For the safety of you two, please move into the palace with us. Landon asked. Your Highness. Please call little Landon, Landon said smilingly. Little Landon I'll go with you. 
Momo was so happy that he jumped on the bed and gave his sister a big hug. Captain Josh help Sister Grace pack up here. Commander Lucius, little Momo and myself will pack up in the dining area. Josh was stunned. He turned and saw Lucius and Landon chuckling. He turned his head back to Grace. She keep looking towards the floor, but it was clear that she tried to hide her blush. She was so cute, Josh smiled and thought. These bastards, they even have the nerve to give me a thumbs up. Haha. Ha. Luckily she didn't see anything. It would have been so embarrassing. Once they got home, Landon told his mom and Lucy all that happened. They warmly welcomed Momo and Grace into their family. Little Momo and Grace were given rooms close to each other. They were also close to Lucy and Kim's rooms. Landon gave the job of training Momo as a night page to Josh. Momo was eight now, so it was the perfect time to train him. Although seven years old was the appropriate age in the continent. He sat on his bed and tried to go to sleep. Tomorrow was a busy day for him. He had to train with the men in the morning and then head out to the farms to solve the barren land situation. As he laid on his bed, his eyes became heavy with fatigue and his mind drifted to sleep. The next day. Landon stood in the center of the inner courtyard facing over 300 men. He was impressed. If he were back on earth, it would be about 5 a.m. now, and yet all the men were up and ready. None of them came late. Even Momo showed up early. He knew that for his plan to work, he needed to discipline them well. He looked at them coldly, giving off an aura of an old war veteran. Line up in straight lines of ten. He started counting out loud. 1.2.3.4.5.6.7.52. They all formed their teams under 52 seconds waited for his next command. Too slow. Lines should be formed by the time I count to five. From today onwards, anyone who isn't fast in lining up will run ten laps around the courtyard before training begins. Is that understood? Yes, King Landon. During training, I will be your commander and not your king. When answering to me, you will all say, Sir, yes, sir. Say it. Landon yelled. Sir, yes, sir, they yelled back. There are four military disciplines to follow while training. These rules are to be followed only when you are in training. First, I am the law here. Second, obey my orders. Third, unconditionally obey my orders. Fourth, when I am not around, obey Commander Lucius' orders. The men were taken aback by his opposing aura that sent chills down their spines. Is that understood? Sir, yes, sir. He did warm-up exercises with them for ten minutes and stopped. He watched and waited for them to catch their breaths. After one minute he yelled. Line up behind your assigned night captains. They immediately got up and looked for the captains in a flash. No one wanted to be punished. They all lined up behind Josh, Mark and Gary. Momo lined up behind Josh since he was told that Josh would train him. In fact Lucius was impressed. He had always struggled when disciplining young knights. This was a real eye-opener to him. After these exercises, you all should have realized how weak you are physically. You all lack stamina and strength. At this point, they all came to the conclusion that their king was a demon trainer. He had joined them in training earlier and yet, he stood there looking back at them as if this was a casual walk. They had to admit, their king was pretty strong. Actually, when the system cured him previously, it also gave him extra strength when he took the system starter pack. Staring at their tired faces without any hint of emotions, he continued. Captains Josh, Mark and Gary stepped forward. They stepped out and looked at Landon. You all will lead your teams in becoming stronger. You will face challenges together and ensure that no soldier falls behind. If anyone in your team fails, it would mean that you also failed. Do you understand? Sir, yes sir, answered the three. They stepped back and stood in front of their respective teams. Listen up. Everybody squat down with your feet in a wide stance, hands clasped behind your back. Although they were confused, they hurriedly did it. Even Lucius who was standing by the sides, decided to join in. He wanted to experience this new exercise. Holding this squatting position, jump to move forward. You are all to do this ten times around the courtyard. Little Momo will be required to do only four rounds. Hearing this, the soldiers thought that this exercise would be a breeze. Even little Momo and Lucius was doubting the effects of this kind of exercise. How could Landon not know what they were thinking of? Back on Earth, he thought the same thing too, the first time he saw how the three Xersais was done. Landon walked to the very back of the lines besides Lucius and squatted down. Then he yelled coldly. Start! Once they started, everyone was was excited. 
They thought they would finish it fast and be done. After a while, they were breathing heavily and their throats were dry. Most of them were proud of their strength before, but now they couldn't help but look at their weak bodies. Even Lucius started to feel the burn, but he knew he couldn't stop. Gary felt like he was about to die. His heavy arms and tired legs started wobbling. Momo felt the burn in the legs and thighs. Does this mean I'm weak? He thought. From the back, seeing people feeling tired, Landon spoke out. If you give up so easily, are you real soldiers? Are you real men? Get up. This is an order. My command is law. When they heard him at the back, they all had one thought. Demontrina. As the training progressed, their thighs felt numb. Every time they wanted to quit, they would hear the devil's voice from behind. Those that give up will be face my wrath. If you want to see. He hey, try me. As they looked at little Momo, they were truly envious of the fact that he had finished his rounds. The inception of this chapter's publication is linked to N0V3L.B1N. Trey truly felt like his legs were going to RIP off his circuits. As he thought of his best friend Landon, he wondered where he had learned this sort of demonic training from. Trey thought that Landon made the training up on the spot. In fact, no one suspected that Landon was different. He had always been a very weird child. He was always too quiet growing up, a little introverted. When people would bully or insult him he would just watch. He never really cared about how they treated him. He never cried or showed any form of worry. So they all thought this was still him. As the exercise progressed, everybody gave it their all since no one wanted to do any of the devil's punishments. Once they were done they all dropped to the floor like flies. Everyone was dead tired. Their thighs felt sore and their hands felt heavy. Some were lying on the ground, while others were kneeling down trying to catch their breath. Some even tried to sleep for a minute. While the ones that were awake started looking at the main culprit who caused them to be in this state. In fact, they almost thought he wasn't human. He had been doing these exercises with them and yet he looked the same as he was before the exercise. Once everyone caught their breaths and became more relaxed, Landon spoke. Line up. Once they heard the devil's call, they all jumped for their lives, lining behind their captains. Even those who were almost asleep woke up and acted like shinobis as they desperately tried to find the captains. In fact Landon was sure that after this day, most people would literally stick closer to their captains like glue. Landon chuckled secretly. The men followed him in training for the next 45 minutes. They did sit-ups, duck walks, leg stretching, front kicks, normal kicks, side kicks, back kicks and roundhouse kicks, all these exercises were new to them. When they were done he allowed them to rest for a bit. While they were resting, a maid came over and spoke to him in a very low whispery tone. You will all follow me in straight lines for breakfast. Your breakfast will be served every morning at this exact time. If you are absent for breakfast because you were of your duty or sickness, you need not worry. The staff will make sure to deliver your food wherever you are in Baymard. Now follow me. As they followed him into the dining area, they saw twelve maids, his mother, Lucy, Grace and twelve giant pots of food. On the side of the pots were a lot of plates and spoons. The dining hall looked exactly like the meal hall in Harry Potter if not, bigger. You have an hour. As soon as they heard the Demon King, they quickly rushed up one by one to get their meals. With twelve pots stationed and twelve maids serving the food, within twenty minutes everyone had food on their plates. Water was then brought out and served to the men. Those who finished their food earlier could go for a second round if they weren't satisfied. The only issue was that it had to be done within the time frame Landon had set for them. He brought little Momo with him and joined Lucius, Lucy, Grace and his mom for breakfast. Looking at the cute tired Momo, Lucy, Kim and Grace lightly pinched his cheeks. Little Momo, is it too stressful for you, you don't have to work that hard, auntie will take care of you. Kim said while smiling at him. That's right, when sister gets strong she will feed you and take care of you but Grace said while nodding her head. You just tell big sister when you want to stop, okay? Lucy added. Auntie, elder sister, sister Lucy, I'm fine. Brother Landon took good care of me when we were training. I want to get strong. Momo replied. My cute little Momo. So cute, Ikim said while rubbing his head. My little man is so cute, Grace said while lightly pinching his jaw. Little Momo you are so adorable, Lucy said while lightly pinching his other cheeks. Momo turned and saw Lucius and Landon holding in their laughters. He felt wronged. No man wanted to hide behind women forever. What would people say? He looked at his arms and thought, cute? Adorable? 
No. No. Father Landon was right. Right now I'm too weak. Once the time was up, Landon yelled. Line up and move out. In the minds of the men, the words line up was their devil commander's favorite words. And their worst. They were pretty sure they would have nightmares of the king chasing them while saying, line up. When they returned to the courtyard, Landon continued. Two weeks from now, all teams will compete with each each. The strongest in each team would be made second in command to their team captains. Also, those who prove themselves will be promoted on the spot. Everyone was surprised and excited. Everyone is required to practice their swordsmanship for at least an hour a day. There will be three sessions, one after breakfast, one after lunch and one right before dinner. He looked at them seriously and continued. For today, we will train in swordsmanship now. And right after training, Commander Lucius will give you all your responsibilities. Some of you might need to guard to entrance, checking for spies, while others will work in the city. Everyone listened attentively. Landon took his sword from the ground and smiled at them, making them extremely confused. As of now I am not your commander, Commander Lucius is. Right now his word is the law. I am just a knight in training. They almost coughed up blood. Who are you trying to deceive with those innocent looks? One minute you're a demon and the next minute you're an angel? Ah oh, thank goodness. At least now we don't need to be alert all the time. They all sighed from relief. Some even tried to sit on the floor. Lucius looked at them and knew that they needed disciplined. And who said you could sit? Those who broke out of formation. Step out and give five me one hundred push-ups each. Captain Josh, start training Page Momo. The rest of you take out your swords. Let's train as said Lucius. Sir, yes, Sergei. They all yelled back including Landon. They couldn't help but sigh. From the frying pan to the fire. From one demon king to another. At the same time, Lucius was happy with the positive responses he was getting. The men were more attentive and did things more diligently. I can get used to this, he thought.